Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Table Talk with Tracy Marie. How are you guys doing today? I was going to say on this early, beautiful Saturday morning, all sunny and I can't say that now, no, because it's, it's looked like it's getting ready to rain. But guess what? That's OK. Still a beautiful day. And I thank you for being with me today. And today's discussion, we're going to be talking about healing after divorce. Um, it's a it's a difficult topic to talk about, but it's a real topic to talk about because a lot of people in the body of Christ are dealing with this, whether they have already gone through it or whether they are contemplating it or dealing with it right now. So that's what we're going to be talking about. But I, I, before we even go there and get started with that, I just want to thank God this morning for a brand new day. I want to thank him for life, health and strength. And I just want to thank him for his goodness and his mercy. And I know you listeners out there have to feel the same way. I, You know, we've all been through so much. Each one of us has had our own personal testimonies, our own tests, our trials, our, our, our storms, everything we've gone through. But God has never failed his children. And for that, yes, thank you, Jesus, yes. And for that... I say thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for me. Come on, y'all. Let's get this day started right.
always tell you guys that I am excited, you know, and I am excited, but I am very, very, very excited today because I have a special guest with me today who is a very good friend of mine, and um, she is more like family than she is just my friend. We have known each other since we were little girls singing on a junior choir in Deliverance Evangelistic Church, and I am just so happy that she is gracing us with her presence today, and she is going to give some insight as well as some words of wisdom and her experience of what she went through regarding healing after divorce. So please, everybody, would you all welcome my sister friend, Sandra LaPrade. <laughs> Say hi, Sandra. Hi. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. I am so happy to be here. And, uh, um, it, to be here, to be talking today with you and with your audience concerning everything that um, that I went through and to give some, some words of wisdom and to inspire someone else. And I just thank God for the ministry. I just thank God for your ministry, for your thank gifting, God. and for just letting you flow, you know, in this particular area um, because there are people out there that need to hear exactly what you have to say and what other people have to say concerning your topic. So I, I, I just praise God for being here. Yes. Now, you know, I told you, you know, we got to be careful because, you know, we're not just having that regular sister-girl conversation <laughs> we can, where we can talk for two and three hours and let the Holy Spirit have his way and we just all want to yes. go crying and talking about scripture and all that other stuff. We can't do that today, chick, so you got to behave yourself. I already all right, you. all right, all right. Okay. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard, but I can do it. <laughs> so, so we're going to just try to, you know, um, for those of you out there, my sister um, recently went through a divorce, and I am divorced as well, but I was divorced back in 2008, and before that I was separated for a long time. But the fact of the matter is this, um, we by, by no means advocate divorce at all. We celebrate marriage. We encourage marriage. And just like God loves marriage and does not like and hates divorce, we feel the very same way. But the reality is, is that in the body of Christ, there are people that have been divorced and are going through divorce because of whatever reason it may be. So today we just want to share our experiences and try to encourage you. And we just want the Lord to use us today to say something that may help you. And if it doesn't relate to you, maybe you know someone that is going through a divorce or who is divorced and still trying to get through the, you know, get through the emotions of it. Or maybe they're contemplating because they're going through in their marriage. So we just hope that something we say today will bless you and will help you. So, all right, Sandra, I guess for me, I guess where I'm going to start is, uh, for you, what was your what was the determining factor for you when you decided that you you did have to go through with the divorce? Okay, my my determining factor was um, when I um, felt that my safety was in jeopardy. My safety. I have a daughter. Um, my daughter is a teenager. When I felt that our safety was in jeopardy, mm-hmm. then I knew that something had to be done. Um, I knew that I I had to leave. I don't, um, by all means, you know, um, say that. Um, think I think the way the Bible thinks, and no divorce is not okay. But um, in certain circumstances, when you think that your life is in in jeopardy or in danger, that's when I think that it's time to leave. That's right. I agree. And I want to say this publicly. Um, I was there, well, not physically there, but, you know, um, Sandra and I kept in contact because at that time she was living in another state, but we talked frequently. And I, I was there, and I witnessed everything that she went through. And I will say that I was very proud of her because not only was she strong, but in everything that she dealt with, she trusted God. And I just commend you on that because, when a lot of us, you know, you remember um, waiting to excel. Remember that moment where she went out and <laughs> set his car on fire. Remember that? Yes. And sold yes. All clothes and all that stuff. You know, us Christian women, we think like that too. You brothers out oh, here, yeah. out oh, there, yeah. don't y'all get it twisted? Yes. <laughs> yes. Jesus, Jesus yes. keeps us sane. <laughs> so we don't do that. So we don't set stuff on fire. But no, seriously. I commend you so much because you just, you know, I saw how God was working in you, and you just had such a quiet strength. 
And, you know, a lot of times people get very negative and they get very um, vindictive and, and just mean-spirited in the things that they do because of the hurt. And you didn't do that. So I applaud you for that, my sister, that how you handled that. Well, I, I thank God and I do that to be able to keep him to give me strength to endure that situation yes. because, um, like you said, there could have been uh, many things that we could have done or that, you know, that I could have, you know, um, been – mean and, and, and just, just retaliated or paid tit for tat and stuff like that or whatever. But I right. can thank God. And I thank God for my relationship for with him before I got married because that helped me endure during that marriage. Right, definitely. I know for me, my situation was, you know, and I think this is this is something that we're going to delve into a little um, further um, along in the conversation. But for me, point blank bottom line, I got married because I got pregnant. And, you know, being raised in church, the old school way was you get pregnant, y'all need to get married. And yeah. so my marriage led me, you know, we were not prepared. God did not bless it. God did not tell me that he was my husband, nor do I believe that God told him I was his wife. But we were young and foolish, and, I mean, my mother, his mother tried to give us wisdom. We didn't want to listen because we just thought we knew everything. Right. And so when the reality of marriage slapped us both in the face, you know, um, I tried to do it right. I tried to hang in there, but I think I did that more for um, appearance sake because, right. you know, okay. I think like every other female out there, you know, who wants to get married, you dream of being married for the rest of your life with that one man and just raising right. a family, and that's your dream. That's what you see. So when that doesn't happen, it makes you feel like you're somewhat of a failure, and you don't want to become a statistic. So I wasn't holding on to the marriage because I just was in so much love, and I held on more so for appearance sake, you know. But right. he, he did me the greatest favor in the in the world when he left, and he walked away from me and my children. He did the best favor for because I believe had he stayed and we stayed in an unhealthy marriage, I would not be the woman that I am today. So I, right. I'm glad that he did walk away. Way, even though it was hard, today I'm grateful for that. So I also want to ask you, like, when mm -hmm. you were going through, because, you know, point blank, bottom line, when we come from a divorce, that's a very hurtful thing. Oh, very, It's not something very. that you just get over. You just don't. Even when people see you and you're smiling and everything, they don't know what happens when you're by yourself in your bedroom and you're just dealing with the feelings. Like, what did you do or how? what helped you to get past that or get through that? The hurt, the well, well, first, first, let me say that unlike, um, unlike a death, divorce is so, um, uh, it's it's a little bit a little bit different. With death, mm -hmm. you have an immediate closure, mm -hmm. um, and with divorce, you have like a carrying away because because it reminds you that you are one. God sees you as one. So it's neither him nor I. It's, you know, when we come together, we become one. So when that one is torn, when that, half of that one is torn away, mm -hmm. then you have like a, a open wound. And it takes a process of, of healing to get, um, to get through, to get past that. And what I did, yes, there were some nights that, you know, I cried and I cried myself to sleep and there was some, but I, remind you, I had a daughter as well. Mm -hmm. So, I had to get myself together and, right. you know, and after repenting to God for, because I had some guilty feelings. So after repenting to God um, for any part that I had in it, I also had to forgive myself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what we don't do is forgive ourselves. Mm -hmm. But it took some prayer. It took um, going to church. I just threw myself into sometimes um a person can throw themselves into being busy. Um, you can just be busy so that you won't have to, so you can be um, feel that numbness as you go through, should I say. Okay. Um, that can be good and that can be bad. Um, sometimes you have to throw yourself into a numbness because you have all these feelings and you are not able to really function. Right. So I, I prayed a lot. Um, I cried. I um I did have um I had you of course and I you know talked to and you know helped me out and you know um um you introduced me to a, a prayer a prayer in the morning the five o'clock prayer and mm -hmm. it was just um it was just God it was only God that actually took me through right and I think we need to let the listeners out there who are going through this and dealing with it we please understand that 
the healing process is natural and it's a normal thing. And don't let anybody make you feel like how you're healing or how you're going through the process is not natural or normal because, listen, right. if you need to cry, cry. You know, right, if, right. if you need that time to yourself, you know, mm-hmm. take that time. But I will say this, make sure you surround yourself around people, first of all, that will, yes. that will let you be transparent and let you be yes. real, okay? A lot of times we go to church and we're so used to putting on fake faces and, making, and, and trying to present that everything is okay and it's not, and that's not the way it's supposed to be. You know, we're supposed to be able to encourage one another and help one another through our trials and tribulations. The Word of God says rejoice when they rejoice, weep when they weep. So we should be here. And so make sure you surround yourself around people also that will speak life into you. You do not need people. I call them naysayers and the haters. You know the ones that always got something smart to say, well, if that was me, I, no, we don't mm-hmm. care about it you because it's not you. No, right. make sure that you're around people that will not keep you where you're trying to get out of. Right. Make right. sure you got people that will encourage you with the word of God, that will love on you, and that will be patient with you. And even those people that have you know, possibly gone through what you advice and give you wisdom and encourage you that you are going to come out of this thing. And above all, pray. Yes. Pray, praise God, worship him, because it's in those times that you will, you know, his presence will give you exactly what you need. And please understand that it is okay for you to, you know, go through those moments of, because it's you're grieving, okay? Come on. You're grieving because that is somebody that you loved that you yes. shared life with, that you possibly had children with, and now you're separated. Mm-hmm. So there's mm-hmm. going to be a grieving process, and that's okay. And if, and if you feel like you, you can't or you're trying to get through it and you can't, reach out to those people that you trust, whether it's your Please. pastor, a family member, a good friend, reach out. Let them know. Don't do it by yourself. That's why we have each other, because sometimes you need that person to talk to, to cry to, that will encourage you and give you what you need when you can't do it for yourself. So I hope Definitely. you can receive that. and. Sandra, how are you like doing today? Like, do you still have bad days when you think I, about? I, I mean, I you you always have those. I don't have bad days, praise God. Um, but you always have those days that that you um, remember different things that have happened, be good or bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and you 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 kind of um, thank God. I thank God. Um, even for those times, good and bad, because it made me the person that I am today. Um, so um, bad days, no, I don't have them because I've given them to God. But um, there are times when I do think about, you know, just different things that have transpired and that have happened. Um, right. And I use them as learning tools because um, right. everything is a learning tool, you know. I use them as learning tools for me and use them as, um, if you will, medicine that I went through to help somebody else, like yeah. today, you know, um, it, that's what it's all about. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's an unfortunate situation, but you are um, there to be transparent and to help somebody else that needs to be, um, that needs to hear. Yes. I agree. I agree with that. And I'm going to tell you something else, and this is just real talk for you ladies and gentlemen out there, you know, um, don't let the situation make you become bitter. I'm only telling no. you my experience because I went through a bitterness. I, 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 you know, what I did was just what the enemy wants us to do, and that is I, I kept everything in. I hid stuff because I was embarrassed, and instead of allowing it and giving it over to God, what I did was that I held on to it instead of releasing it and then allowed it to turn into bitterness. And you cannot do that because then what happened to me was, oh, I hate all men now. All men are dogs. Uh, mm -hmm. (laughs) All men are bums. And you know Mm -hmm. what? And the enemy really wants us to believe that. And I'm sure men may go through the same thing. Some men where you look at women now and you judge every female based on the experience you had with the one female. Yes. Not good. Mm -hmm. And it's not healthy because what happens is now you create um, almost a bubble where you're not allowing other people to connect with you. And honey, I'm gonna tell you something. I don't, care. ladies, I don't care how much you, I don't care what you went through with the other man or the other men or the whoever. 
all men are not bums. All men are not dogs. All no, men, there no. are some wonderful men out there, some loving men, some men that sincerely love God. But you know what? Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as perfection, and you're not going to find that in a man. Mm -hmm. But if you find a man that has a heart for God, you're already mm -hmm. starting, you know, at the, on the right foot. On the right foot, foot. yes. But yes. don't be, please do not be all men. That are wonderful women, but now you have a prejudgment of the women that you come across based on your experience. Do not do that. So, would Definitely. you agree, Sandra? You know, sis, I agree totally. You know, Sister Tracy, not only that, um, I want them to, you know, I want everybody to know that the process is normal. Mm -hmm. You go through a process, just like a death. Um, you, you still go through that numbness and that disbelief and the hurt, the embarrassment the anger right. and everything like that. But it's up to you how long that process lasts. Right. You know, in Ecclesiastics, it talks about um, a time, a, dis a different time for different things in life. There's also a time for the process. So right. your process doesn't have to be two years. It doesn't right. have to be a year. It can be a couple of months. It depends on you and how you handle the process. That's true. I agree. Now let me ask you, like, before you came to the decision, and I know for you it was a safety issue, but did you did you talk to um, did you try to get counseling, and did you try to talk to possibly your pastor? Were there steps that you took before you got to that final decision? Yes, there was um, there was um, a couple of different steps that I took because I wanted to make sure that I I mean you know we grew up to where you. Once married, always married. So mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that if it got to a place where as one of us left or if I left, that it was legit. It wasn't that, you know, oh, I'm just, you know, like I can't, you know. You're always going to have hard times. So mm -hmm. um, hard times, you know, the Bible talks about hard times always, you know, you know, being with, you know, someone. So you just work through those processes. But, however, I talked to my pastor. Mm -hmm. I talked to um uh, we um, we went to counseling um, at another um, uh, at a, a, a specific church, mm -hmm. and at that particular church, they had a marriage enrichment pastor who was um, who he counseled, but also had paperwork. You know, a lot of times when you go to churches and they have that counseling session, but mm -hmm. it's not you know it's not like they have um, certification in counseling. Well, he did. So I went to him and I talked to him. I also talked to um my pastor. I talked to um we had another um I guess uh mutual friend that had had a um a counseling session every week for just married couples to just tools to, you know, like maintenance tools on your marriage. And I went to they were um putting things together and step together because they knew our situation that um, they would talk to us one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. So I did talk to about three or four different people, godly people. And they, mind you, it was, you know, um, the pastor, of course, you know, um, he um, had a, a ear for God, but even the other pastor, the marriage and Richmond counselor, he came from a church and he was definitely saved. He gave us tools. He gave us the word, you know, and different things like that. What, what should I say? Mind you, he gave me the word because at a certain point, um, my ex-husband didn't even want to go to counseling. He didn't want that. And that's something we need to understand that, you know, um, in marriage it takes two. It took two to say I do, and it's going yes. to take two to make that or to work that thing through. And I also want to say this because you, you said something earlier and you talked about how we were raised that when you get married, you stay married. Let me tell you something. When we were in church, Sandra, you know it's the truth. We knew so many married people, and we were yes. friends with their children, and their children were shit. Well, you know how young people are, and we, we, we you know, talking and, and they would share how, you know, their mom and dad sleeps in separate rooms. And it was something that we talked about um, a, a, a while ago. And it was so true when we talked about this. A lot of people think that divorce happens once you sign the paper. That is not true. That Listen, oh, divorce no. happens once no. you two. When you, are, when you two are separated mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, yes. sexually, and the mm -hmm. divorce is taking place, when you are in the same house, 
and you're not talking, you're not communicating, you're not sleeping in the same room, you're not being intimate with one another and laughing and just and doing the things that married couples do, that divorce is already taking place in your right. heart. Yes. What yes. happens is that the divorce decree is just a manifestation of what already happened between the two of you. So we need to understand that. So if that's what's happening in your marriage and you want to restore that, by all means, the both of you have to be on the same page. The, the same oh, page of course. Because the both of yes. you have to want to fight for that marriage. So I definitely, I mean, when you said, you know, that your ex-husband didn't want to participate, that, that right there, what, yes. what are you going to do? And, you know, right. it's so sad because I, I know of people that even though the spouse did not want to work it, didn't want to work it out anymore, they were like, well, you know, I'm trusting God, and this is the thing. What does the Word of God say? Because you're saying that you trust God, but do you really trust him? Because to me, right. when, you tell, when you say you trust God, that means you trust his Word, right? Mm-hmm. So if That's God is saying for you to do something, you have to do it, and you have to believe that God knows exactly or he knows what's best for you. And I'm going to give you an example of what I'm saying. The Word of God says in 1 Corinthians 7, um, verses 10 through 16, it says, To the married, I give this command, not I but the Lord. A wife must not separate from her husband, but if she does, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband. And a husband must not divorce his wife. To the rest I say this, I, not the Lord, if any brother has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife, and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But as it is, they are holy. But if the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. The brother or the sister is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. How do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? So right there. The Lord is telling us that if that person wants to leave, and Sandra, it was something you said the other day that I thought was powerful when you talked about that. It doesn't have to specifically state when it talks about the unbelieving spouse. It doesn't have to necessarily right. mean that that person is not saved. How did you break that down to me before? Well, see, um, I think, um, I think that, or the revelation that God gave me was that when it talks about, you know, we all know that the Bible um, is – Sometimes we're the only Bible that some Christians will read until they pick up one. So, or some unbelieving um, unbelievers will read until they pick up one. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, what happens is the Bible is for the believer, Mm -hmm. however, or the Christian. However, there are some things in the Bible, especially this um, particular passage in the Bible that, you know, that talks about the unbelieving husband or the unbelieving um, wife. That doesn't mean that they are unsaved. You know, for so long in church, we believe that when they talked about the unbeliever, it was the unsaved. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that they're unsaved. It means that they just don't believe the way you believe. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you can be saved or you can have your relationship with God, each one of Mm -hmm. you. But if I believe that once married, always married, and you believe that, hey, when I get in trouble, I'm just going to bail, then then the other person is an unbeliever. That's right, and, and and it lines up with the word where God tells us not to be unequally yoked. It doesn't just mean not being with somebody that's not saved, but it, it means right. that you can have two Christians, but if you guys are in two different places spiritually, you're unequally right. yoked. Yes. If you're yes. not going in the same direction spiritually, you are unequally yoked. Girl, this is getting good. We can really have some more fun. Okay, I'm in, I'm, I'm enjoying this. Y'all guys, excuse yes. me, I'm ha- we are behaving, though. If y'all could hear, I, ooh, child, we'd be going at it. By now you would have heard some, some tongues and some singing and some some, some, some some yelling. So we are really behaving. <laughs> yes, definitely ourselves. trying to keep so, ourselves calm. <laughs> what, okay, so what, what we're going to do is we're coming to the end of this segment. So we are going to have a part two to this. Um, and in part two, what we're going to do, we're just going to discuss and we're going to give some some um, words of wisdom and some advice uh, to those who are 
still healing from the divorce or you're, you're going through it right now, contemplating it. But we also have some words of wisdom for those of you who are contemplating marriage because we believe that if we are educated with the knowledge of God's word, yes, we can yes. overcome these things so that we don't have to think about the fact that there's 38% of divorce couples in the body of Christ and that the numbers are rising. We can we can come against that. We can help that, yeah. but it has to be with God's knowledge and his truth. And I think, but you know what, I'm not going to go there. We're going to go there in the next segment. So that's going to be part two. And if you want to continue to listen to the discussion in part two, all you have to do is go to www.tabletalkradioshow.com or you can go to www.spreaker.com forward slash show forward slash the underscore Tracy, T-R-A-C-E-Y, underscore Marie, M-A-R-I-E, underscore show, and you'll be able to continue to listen to this. Please, please tune in because it's going to be a lot of stuff that will bless you. And as I stated before, if it doesn't relate to you, if it relates to somebody that you know that you know it will bless them, by all means, please share this with them. And we are going to be right back with some more Table Talk. 